Hey, what's up guys? Hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Today, I thought it would be a lot of fun to film a Q&A video. So a couple days ago, I did a post on Instagram as well as here on YouTube. And I just asked you guys if you had any questions for me. It could be about rings or anything else. So that's what today's video is gonna be on. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first two questions kind of go hand in hand, so I'll answer them at the same time. The first one is from Jimmy Toms4. Second one is from Max C. Burrows on Instagram. And they, the first guy asked, what lathe do you use? Max asked, what lathe do you use and how are they upgraded? So I thought I'd just go over my lathe setup and what I've done to it. So this is just the Harbor Freight mini lathe. It's just about as basic of a metal turning lathe as you can get. And that's kind of what you need if you wanna do ring making other than just kind of the basic grinding and shaping that you could do on a wood lathe. So I would recommend getting a metal lathe if you are serious into it. And this is about as cheap as you can get one. So. The only modifications I've done to it is just this quick change tool adapter here. And what that does is it allows you to use all these uh, interchangeable tools. So like here, I've got my boring bar. All I need to do to put it on is go like that, tighten it up, it's ready to go. Uh, whereas the regular uh, way to do it is they have like screws they have to put down and then you have to adjust the height, which is a really big pain on these. You can just screw it to adjust the height. It goes up and down. So these just make life a whole lot easier, especially um, after you've made rings for a while, just all the little uh, th time consuming things like that start to get really annoying. So definitely I would recommend that if that you're getting serious into ring making or just any other lathe projects. And then everything else is pretty much standard the way it's set up. Obviously I removed like the backsplash and a couple optional things like the cover on here. But really other than that, it's not really modified. There are like, gear kits that you can get to modify the gear ratios, give it more torque, things like that. But I really do like the way it is, so I just have left it as is. But I thought I'd take a second and then just go over some of the other shop equipment. I know I had a few other comments about that. So I've got my camera here, and I'm just going to go over everything. So here is my lathe. And then right here, this is actually a new lathe that I got a little while ago. You would have seen it on my Instagram story right when I got it. This is a big lathe. It's made by Grizzly. Oh, and that's something I forgot to mention. This lathe, this is a Harbor Freight brand lathe, Central Machinery, that's their company. But these are made in China by a just a big manufacturer and there's a lot of different brands that will rebrand them. So Grizzly, they make a version of this that's just a relabeled version of the same lathe. So a lot of different manufacturers, pick whatever you want. Um, but this Grizzly, this is much bigger, a lot more versatile, a lot more functionality. Um, kind of overkill for rings, honestly, but what's nice about it is because it's so big, it's got so much weight to it, it can be silky smooth. You can see how easy that rotates without any wobble. So this is super stable the way that it is now, whereas my lathe over here, I've got it pretty smooth right now, but there's a little bit of wobble to it. So you can never quite get these set up to be perfect. You're going to need to upgrade to a bigger one eventually if you just want to step up your quality in general. Um, and then just quickly, this is my vacuum chamber um, using a just a vacuum pump. Those are really versatile. This is my compressor, just very, very basic, just enough to be able to fill my pressure pot here. And then over here is my mill. This is something that if you wanna get into ring making, it can do a lot of interesting new techniques. A lot of the videos you've seen where I use this are just kind of really unique rings, but it's not something that's necessarily required. So I'd say get into ring making first using a lathe. And then after you've done some of those projects, maybe upgrade to a mill and that can kind of switch things up for you. Here is my metal cutting bandsaw. We've got a beefier one over at our uh, main production shop. But this is what I use here in the YouTube studio. I can use it for cutting superconductor, like you see there. Then we've got the CNC machine. I've got a bunch of projects that I'm working on for that. And then here I've got my scroll saw. This is just a really good versatile cutting tool. It's able to cut a lot of different bends and angles quickly compared to a bandsaw. So I like the scroll saw. And then here I've got my uh, belt grinder and then belt sander. I would recommend getting a belt sander more like this before where it's wider, got a bigger uh, sanding area. That way it's a little bit more versatile. And then these are handy just because they can power through material a little bit quicker. So that's a rundown of all the stuff I've got here. I've got my drill press and my polisher. Those are put away at the moment, um, but those are the only other things that I've got here at this shop. 
Um, I keep it a little bit basic here just because I like to have a kind of clean studio setup. I've got a little bit more equipment at our other shop and maybe I'll go over that in the future. Let me know if you're interested. All right, that took a bit longer than I was hoping, but that gives you an overview of all the stuff I've got in the shop. I've wanted to do that for a while just because I get so many comments asking for it. Um, and then our next question is by Glockified on Instagram. He said, what got you into making rings? So this is a good question. I kind of just stumbled into ring making, honestly. Growing up, I've always loved making things. I love building things with my hands. And when I first made a ring, I thought it was a lot of fun. And what really got me interested into it was the fact that I could make a really nice ring. And that's not true for a lot of things. Like say for example, if I tried to go build a car by myself, I could maybe do it, you know, you weld all the stuff together, get an engine, do all that stuff, really complicated. I have to learn a lot obviously, but it would not be a nice car. And obviously to make a nice car, like imagine like Lamborghini or Mercedes, just a really nice car manufacturer. There's so much that goes into every one of them. So I could never even dream of being able to make a cool car that's really nice and very functional by myself. And so rings, that's kind of something that's on a lower level where that's something that a single person can do at home with not too much equipment and make a ring that's just as nice as any other ring that you'd see in the world. So. That's what I like about ring making. It's something that I can do personally, that I can make a ring that is as cool as I can imagine. And I can't make a car that is as cool as I can imagine or just anything like that. Rings are kind of that perfect balance of something that's complex enough that it makes it really cool and interesting, but simple enough that one person as an individual can do it themselves. So that's what I like about ring making. That's why I do it. And that's why I'm still doing it, obviously. Next question comes from, uh, Jasp, Jerg, I don't know, no idea how to pronounce that. Um, they ask, what is the process of coming up with new ring ideas? So this is an interesting question and one that you guys maybe have wondered about. Basically, just whenever I'm doing anything in my life, because I'm a ring maker, I'm just always thinking about what I could do to make a ring out of it. And so just whatever I'm doing, and I think a good example was I was in China over the summer. And while I was there, I was just really interested in all the cool materials and things that are different to China. Like we went into this market and they had just this really cool slab of ebony and I just bought it. It was just this chunk of ebony, but it's really cool and interesting. And so I just love the materials. It's something that I was like, wow, I, I want to integrate that into a ring. And then we went to the Forbidden City and just seeing all the cool painted colors and the copper and things that they had there. And, there, there's a lot of gold in the Chinese culture. So it was really cool to see all of that. And so that's one of the ideas that I have is just combining all of the things that I was able to experience in China and making it into a ring that I think would be perfect for that. So maybe it'd have copper, have some really cool vibrant colors on it. So maybe some gold as well as some ebony. I think that would be really cool. And on my phone, I've just got a list of every time I come up with an idea, I just write it on there. Some of them are more fleshed out than others, but right now I just counted it up. There's about 150 of them on there and about 50 of those I have checked off and done as videos. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of just kind of the process I go through. Next question comes from Danzin on Instagram. They asked, what did you do before making rings? So that's a good question. One that I get a lot, just like all the other questions that I've gone over so far. Um, I was a student, so I was in high school and I was really interested in just like creative crafty things. So I was doing like pottery as well as just art classes. And I was in like a robotics class. I had a lot of fun with that. That was a lot of fun. We used the, it's called VEX robotics. So it's just kind of a kit that you can use and doing a lot of the different programming and things like that. I just, I don't know, really interested in working with my hands, making and building stuff. So that's what I was into. That's what I was doing. And then after that, I started, like I said, I did started doing rings in my senior year of high school. And then I moved on to college after that. So I was going to the University of Utah and I was studying mechanical engineering. And during that whole time, I was doing rings on the side as more of like a hobby and something that I was trying to make into more of a business. And so I slowly got to the point where it was more of a realistic business. I took a year off school to focus on it and just never went back. So that's how I got to where I am now. Next question comes from Handmade Wooden Rings on Instagram. He asks, what are your best tips on starting to sell rings? This is a good one. It is really tricky to just start a company one day and hope that people will buy your rings. I was super um, kind of just shocked by the way that it worked when I first got into it. You know, I made my Instagram account at first. I 
post these rings that I make, but no one's just gonna follow you for no reason. So um, it is kind of tricky getting started. So I would just sell rings at whatever price people would pay for it. And so I was making way less than minimum wage. It was definitely not worth my time, but it was something that I knew I'd have to just power through in order to grow my business. And so I was just doing whatever I could to sell rings, whatever I could to grow my business. And then I was slowly able to get to the point where I could charge enough that I was like making minimum wage. So we got to that point and then I've just moved on from there. So that's my advice for getting started. You just gotta start with what you can do and try to grow it for however you can from there. Next question comes from Alexandra Sasha Spirin. I'm gonna try that again. Alexandra Sasha Spirindanov. I think I pronounced that somewhat right. It says, uh, what tools did you work with before your lathe? That's a good question, one that I like answering because before I used a lathe, all I used was a Dremel. And I've got mine down here. Oh, I forgot to go over this earlier. It's hiding under my lathe. This is a flex shaft rotary tool. Basically, it's a Dremel with a, a little hose thing that makes it so the uh, actual tool head here is smaller and a lot more ergonomic. But basically, you can uh, you, you get the idea. That's what a Dremel looks like. This is all I had, this is all I started with. I had just like a $30 Dremel. You can get them for even cheaper on Amazon. And I had a piece of carbon fiber. And with that, I was able to bore out a hole in it. I didn't even have a drill press. So I literally was just hand sanding through the carbon fiber until I could get a hole in it. Then I cut it out with the, uh, using the discs. So like one of these diamond grinding discs here. So just very, very basic tools. I just hacked out a kind of circular square shape, stuck it on the end of the Dremel, something that's kind of dangerous, wouldn't necessarily advise doing, but stuck it on there, uh, got it to fit, and then I just held it up to uh, some sandpaper or a sanding sponge until it got a rounded shape to it. And that was how I made my first ring. That's how I got started. Obviously, um, I was able to pretty quickly find faster ways of doing it, and I was able to start affording a little bit better equipment, so I got a lathe, things like that. So you can get started with just super basic materials. If you have a power drill, you could probably do some really similar techniques. So just whatever you've got, try to make a ring with it, and you can probably do it. Next question comes from Salamonkey on Instagram. He says, hi, how do you get all of your exotic materials? Basically, there's some uh, pretty good ring suppliers on Instagram that you can find fairly easily. But other than that, probably the majority of my materials, I just start looking on the internet. So eBay is a really good place that I go to. Just search for whatever material it is you're looking for. You can find a supplier there. And it's not always the best supplier at first, but you're able to actually find it. So if you can find like Mammoth Tooth, for example, you can order some of that. You can work with it, figure out what's good, what's bad, and be able to figure out the best supplier based on that information. So so that's my advice for that. Next question comes from Smith Crafters on Instagram, and he is another ring maker, very similar to me. I think we started at similar times. I think he even started before me. So we've been buddies through the industry. He's a really talented guy. I recommend you go check out his page. Um, but anyways, he asked two questions. His first one was, what's my favorite pie? That's very appropriate for Thanksgiving. And uh, my answer to that, it's kind of like cheating, but I like cheesecake. So I really like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup cheesecake that the Cheesecake Factory has. So I'd say that's my favorite. And then number two, he said, what's my favorite material and why? And that question, very difficult. Um, you could say, you know, like rose gold is a lot of fun to work with and it's a very expensive material. So that's kind of like a, I feel like a cop-out answer because it's an expensive material. It's nice, that's obviously what I'd pick. But I would say if, all of the materials cost the same if everything, you know, if gold was just worthless and it was just another material, I would say carbon fiber is my favorite. And not necessarily because it's the best for making rings, even though I do think it is fantastic for making rings and it's great in a lot of scenarios, but it was the first material that I started working with. So it's just kind of sentimental and special to me. And so that's why you see so much carbon fiber integrated into a lot of my rings. It's a lot of fun to work with. It's fairly easy to machine once you know how to work with it. It is really different, but once you figure it out, you can machine it fairly easily. And it just makes amazing, unique rings that are super strong and lightweight. So I love it. Next question comes from Carly L. Ho on Instagram. She asked, how do you balance your work and life? 
So that's a really good question. I'm self-employed, so I can obviously like make up my own hours and do all of that. But there's a lot of responsibilities and things that I have to do in order to make the business still run. And so I end up spending a lot of time working, obviously, and just doing all the different things that it requires to keep going. And so what I like to do is I like to travel. It's a way that I can physically remove myself from the work. That way I'm not overworking myself, anything like that. And it just clears my head. It's a lot of fun. I like seeing new places. So I really like traveling. I think that's probably the one thing that I do that really helps balance my life out. Next question comes from Keith Allen, New World Muscle on Instagram. He said, on a previous podcast, you made references to lawyers. What exactly do you need lawyers for? So that's a good question. Kind of a cool behind the scenes thing to be able to know. Basically, lawyers are really great to have in order to prevent your company from going out of business. A lot of catastrophic things could happen. So there's a lot of really bad things that could happen to a small business. And so that's what I'd say is our main use of them. They help us create contracts if we're ever working with another person that makes things legal. There's a lot of bad things that could go wrong if you don't create a contract when you work with someone. And so you gotta make sure you have everything set in place and you have the expectations met. Also, when we have employees, there's a lot of liability, things like that. We have to make sure we have insurance and everything like that. So just a lot of the complicated, not very fun stuff, that's what they're able to help us with and make sure our company is safe and just not going to get hit by a random suit or something like that. So that's why we've got lawyers. Next question comes from PAD Shop Boys on Instagram. They said, can we all have a raise? Next question comes from Isaac Torrent. Says, is it possible to make a living selling rings without the YouTube channel? So that's a good question. Um, I think it definitely is. I was making a living before my ring channel started. And so you obviously, based on that, you obviously can. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Like you can go to farmer's markets. I know a friend of mine started out making uh, quarter rings where he would fold quarters into rings after he punched out the middle of them. And he'd sell those at farmer's markets. That's what he was doing for a long time. So you can do farmer's markets, Etsy, stuff like that. There's a lot of different things. There's a thousand different strategies you could use. So I would say just get started, sell rings however you can, and that's how you can support yourself. Alpha Bands asks, how many employees do you have? So we have about 11 full-time employees. That includes ring makers, business people, and that includes employees for Patrick Adair Supplies as well as Patrick Adair Designs. And then another kind of company that we have that's a subset of this that we do just all of our marketing stuff with. We've got a couple of people for that. So there's about 11, I think maybe 12 of us in that kind of like main core that are like full-time. And then we've got probably something like 10 contractors that we use consistently for just all the other work. Moving on, MD Horrocks asks, what's your CSGO rank? So I am a Gold Nova 1. If you have no idea what that means, just know that I'm not very good at video games. MD Horrocks asked a follow-up question. He said, did the Drake vocals come in yet? Uh, they definitely did not. I have no idea what you're talking about. MLG underscore Austin underscore Web asks, do you like dog? Yes, I like dogs. Next question, M7 on Instagram asks, what's been your favorite collaboration video? And that's a good question. I've done a lot of fun collaborations throughout the years. And I think my favorite was the first video that I ever did with the Water Jet channel. That was a whole lot of fun. That was when I was really new to making rings and still just getting started. And I took a slab of meteorite over to them with the Water Jet and we made a video just cutting it out. And it was just a lot of fun meeting those guys. I'd watched their videos for a long time before that. So it was really cool meeting them. And it was super helpful for my business. I got a lot of subscribers from it, got a lot of ring orders, everything like that. So that was fantastic. Fantastic, and I loved working with them. That was probably my favorite. Now we're moving over to YouTube comments. Maximilian Zalisco asks, if you could create a third channel, what would it be about? So that's a good question. For a long time, especially growing up, I was super interested in tech. And uh, over the years, I thought that that would be a really cool third channel to do, something that I have uh, a decent amount of expertise in, something that I'm not great at, but I think something that I could learn. But it's a lot of hard work. And you'll notice if you see any of those successful tech YouTubers, just how many videos they've put out, how good they are at what they do. So I have a lot of respect for the tech YouTubers out there. I'd love to try it one day, but I just don't know if there would be the time or if I'd be good at it. But maybe one day, who knows? TJ Soul Surfer asks a similar question to one that I answered earlier. He said, do you need a lot of money to get started in ring making and what is the absolute must have? 
And so, like I said, you need almost nothing. I started out with just a Dremel. So what I would say is whatever you can afford, get whatever tool you can. So you can start with just a Dremel. From there, you can work up to what I think a drill press would be the next upgrade that you would want. And then from there, you'd want a metal lathe. And the drill press and the Dremel, they're not designed for ring making, but you can make it work on them. And so you can just kind of fiddle around with it and make it work. So I'd say just get started with whatever you can afford and uh, hope to eventually move up to a metal lathe soon. Next question comes from Unique Addiction on YouTube. He asks, what is your dream material to make a ring out of? And so that's a really good question, something that I had to give a lot of thought to because I've made a ring out of almost every material I can think of, like meteorite, for example. I think that's an incredible material, something where if you went to me five years ago and said one day you're gonna be making rings out of meteorite, I would have said like, no way, that's crazy. And so that's a really hard question. I've worked with gold, I've worked with a lot of things. And so it's kind of tricky. Something that I've always wanted to try just because of how ridiculous it would be, would be to get just a solid bar of gold, 24 for karat gold and do machine a ring out of it using the techniques that I would for example like carbon fiber. It would be super wasteful. Obviously I would do my very very best to collect any of the shavings or anything left over but I think it'd be so cool to see a bar of gold go from the bar shape to a ring blake shape to machine it down and make a pure gold ring out of it. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Maybe one day if I get probably that would be probably at least $10,000 of gold. So that'd be a huge project. It'd be ridiculous and kind of pointless. So maybe one day, who knows, we'll see. And the final question comes from Jackal Ladon on YouTube. He asks, what is the most ambitious project that you have in mind? So this is a really good question, one that's kind of really tough to answer. I think the biggest thing, one of my goals for 2019 is I wanna raise over $100,000 for charity. And so that's kind of my ambitious goal for that. And so that's obviously going to require a ton of work and a ton of support from the community. And that's why I would wanna do it. It'd just be such a cool community builder. Uh, my idea for it is to just gather ring makers, other YouTubers, everyone we can, and just come together as a bunch of makers. And in some way, use all of our audiences and our influence to bring everyone together and do our best to do just a project or multiple projects where we just try to raise money for charity. So that's something that I've kind of kept on the down low for a really long time, something I've been working on in the background. But I think this is a really uh, cool question that this guy have. I wanted to give you a genuine answer. So. Uh, keep that between you and me over the next little while and we'll see if I can actually make something of this. It's a huge goal of mine, something I want to accomplish and uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyways guys, that's the video. I want to thank you so much for watching, for sticking around this long. It's a lot of fun to make these videos where I can just kind of get personal with you guys. If you enjoyed it, you can give it a like. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. But other than that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.